Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar. I'm Mark Borbis. Um, and in today's session, we're going to talk a lot about the, the increasing volumes of big data generated in the ATM channel and what you can do about it. Um, a few quick housekeeping items before we get started. Um, you'll notice there's a chat facility in WebEx off to your right. Um, please feel free to submit questions at any time during the presentation. Um, we'll keep an eye on them. If it makes sense to kind of answer it as we go, to clarify, we will. Otherwise, we'll have uh, ample time for Q&A at the end. Um, and if you want to hold your questions to the end, you're welcome to do that as well. Uh, we'll make the slides and a recording of this webinar available. And uh, there's also going to be a, kind of a more expanded version of this, con this content available in a white paper shortly as well. And so everyone who's on the call will also receive a, a link to that white paper. So with that, let's get started and talk a little bit about uh, analytics and big data in the ATM channel. Here's our agenda for today. First thing we'll, we'll talk about is, first of all, what is big data in the ATM channel? And, and is it a problem or is it an opportunity? Um, a little bit of foreshadowing, it's both, and we'll talk about that. Um, we'll talk about two ways to start to harness the big data in your environment, from a, an alert perspective and then from more of an analytics perspective, and the difference between the two and what we see customers doing in each camp and how they kind of move through this. Um, and then, of course, many, many of you manage your ATM channel using a pretty key set of, of key performance indicators. And so we'll talk about how you can enhance and add to those key performance indicators by bringing transaction analytics into the fold and begin to answer questions that are probably circulating around the business that are difficult to answer today um, and be able to put up some key numbers to understand those and, and drive a better uh, and more holistic understanding of what's happening in your ATM channel. And then finally, we'll finish with a case study of um, a recent customer engagement where we did a lot of transaction alerting and analytics work and, uh, and talk about specifically what drove them to, uh, to start down this path and some of the benefits that they're getting. So let's talk about big data. And let's talk about it first in the glass half full opportunity perspective. Um, if you think about, about your ATM network, so your ATMs connected into your host, and going out to different third parties and, and maybe some, some value-added services uh, as part of the mix, it's a pretty rich data environment. Um, you know, every transaction that happens and every, every interaction between a user and an ATM kind of ultimately ends up somewhere in that network, um, and there's a lot of data in there. There's things like, you know, where, where did the transaction begin? Um, how did it end? What did it look like? What was the machine at the end of the wire? Um, what are the characteristics of that machine? How did it perform and how did it behave? You can dig into the actual data going back and forth at the application level and see how much money was moved. What was the fee income or, or revenue on this? Um, what was the card number that was used? What kind of card was it? Then you can start to get, drill a little bit deeper into kind of some of the more technical aspects of this, but things like what were the response codes? That, that came back in the case of an unusual or an anomalous transaction. And that can tell you a lot about what's happening in your environment as well. And then finally, if you start actually looking at the pattern of all these things and timing how long they take, you get some pretty rich data you can use to understand how well your environment is actually performing as a whole and what the user's experience looks and feels like. So you can get kind of as close as you can get to peering over someone's shoulder while they're, they're standing at an ATM. Um, and watching what's happening on the screen, which unfortunately most customers don't like to let you do. But there's some challenges here. Um, it, this is a lot of data, and mining that, getting, getting um, real analytics or making sense of this data is not an easy challenge. Uh, for most of us, we've had pretty significant growth in our data volumes, um, and there's a lot more data coming into the ATM channel. And, You've got to figure out how to move it from what is kind of an online real-time system into an offline system, and where does that live, and how do you get access to it? And we're hearing from a lot of customers that the time it takes to, to prepare reports and, and get data out of the ATM channel is kind of growing on a month-by-month -month basis, and it, it may take a couple of days now to pull together month-end reports, which is a, a lot of effort. And some of that has to do with with a lot more complexity, both in terms of the services we're offering at the ATM, so offering new transaction types, new value-added services, but also the fact that the ATM environment is becoming much more diverse. We often have multi-vendor ATM hardware and software. The network infrastructure is a little more complicated. You have wireless, you may have dial, leased line, 
shared networks with the branch. And what's also happening is that as you start to plug in more of these services to the ATM, your data becomes more decentralized. It doesn't all live on the transaction switch anymore. It doesn't all live in the ATM journal necessarily. It may live in other distributed systems like your, um, your tech imaging platform or your mobile top-up platform. And so all of a sudden this data is in a lot of different locations. And, and we, what we see is this, is this is why it's getting more complicated to understand the ATM channel is because the data itself is spread across a lot more different sources and, and it's a lot of work to pull it together and bring it into one place and make sense of it. Couple that with the fact that there's just a lot more of it and you've got a big data problem. So one of the first ways that we suggest customers begin to break down their big data problem is uh, by trying to get a handle on the kinds of events that they're really interested in. So rather than trying to get their arms around all this data at once, let's think about some of the key events you might be interested in in the business. Um, if you're running a large ATM fleet, well, you kind of want to know if you've got uh, transactions flowing from every point in that environment in kind of a normal pattern. So the presence or absence of data becomes pretty important. If an ATM hasn't done a transaction in an hour and you typically expect it to do one every 10 minutes, you want to know about that. That's a critical event. Get an alert off of it. If your transactions are slow or they're failing, that's another great opportunity. That's an event that you, you would want to be interested in. If a transaction doesn't complete, it, it starts but it never ends, that's interesting as well. So there's a key set of events here that you can begin to look at that you know, aren't a huge amount of volume, but, but allow you to kind of dip your toe in and begin to understand what's happening in the channel and, and start to use some of that data in a different perspective. And you can manage it by looking at it at different time windows in the day, um, by maybe saying, look, I'm not that interested in, in one failure, but if I have five failures in a row, or if failures constitute more than 5% of the transactions for a particular card type, I'm interested. And then you can reduce your noise by saying, I, 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 um, I want to know when there's no activity at this ATM for 20 minutes, but when there is activity, please reset that event so that I don't continue worrying about it. So transaction alerts are a great way to get started and start to harness some of the big data and, and use it for, for your benefit. Here's a, a handful of examples from what we've done with customers in this, this area. And they really kind of break neatly into three buckets. Most of our customers are really interested in response times because transaction response times do two things. Um, they're a great proxy for what the user or the customer or the member's experience is at the ATM, and they're also a really good indicator of how well your application and network infrastructure is performing, and as well as how your third-party service providers that might be part of the mix are delivering on their part of the equation. So a number of our customers will set response times alerts around authorization times, response times for third-party services, like uh, perhaps their check image platform or their RDC platform. And they'll, they'll want to know if those things are slower than they expect, uh, if they're below their service levels. Uh, a lot of customers also want to understand for each component of the ATM environment, the network connection, the switch, the application itself residing on the switch, are any of those particular components slow? Because if you think about a modern ATM environment, it doesn't just have a big base 24 switch in the middle of it anymore. It probably has several distributed components that, that provide the services on that ATM. And then finally, um, you're, you're running a big part of your business across lines that you don't necessarily control or own. You have leased lines or dial-up or wireless connections for a number of your ATMs. So understanding the actual performance of the network and getting critical events about network performance can really help you work better with your service provider partners. So response time alerts are kind of the first area. Second one is anomalies or, or, or unusual stuff. So this is where the first piece is just looking at volume patterns. Do I see unusually high or unusually low volumes? And that becomes a pretty important indicator that something is changing or happening in the environment. And this allows you to be more proactive and dig in and try to understand it. Perhaps you see high dollar values uh, or unusual dollar values on a transaction. Someone trying to take out $20.45, which seems kind of unusual in an ATM. Especially if that transaction is successful, you kind of want to wonder what's, what's happening. And then when you start to think about anomalies, 
you kind of need to zero it down and look at things like, you know, is my decline rate higher than normal? Am I seeing more reversals than normal? Um, are my failure rates higher than normal? And does that vary uh, depending on card types, um, different ATMs, et cetera? And then the final thing we find customers want to know a lot about is failures, so problems and faults. Um, are transactions for a certain card type failing? You know, we've issued a new prepaid product. Maybe it didn't quite work the way it should. Um, we seem to have some problems with foreign visa transactions. Um, you may want to understand this at a switch level. Perhaps you have a distributed switching environment and, and one particular component in the environment is not, not performing up to snuff. Um, you may want to see failures for particular services, like is mobile top-up not working but everything else is. So those types of alerts can help you really zero in on exactly what you're dealing with very quickly and understand what the quality of services you're providing across the environment. One of the most common ones is not seeing any transactions for a certain number of time during rush hour um, or looking at, at things in the response codes or the error codes that might tell you that there's someone trying to do something unauthorized in your environment. Uh, macking errors are a very common one where if the device isn't able to properly exchange keys with the host and get in sync, uh, errors will be passed back and forth across the network. And that may tell you that someone's actually trying to bring uh, a miscon malconfigured or um, a an improper device onto the network as well. So these are the types of alerts that um, we see customers work with. And again, most customers find this is a great way to start harnessing that big data is by looking at a few key events that are important to them. Once you've kind of mastered that and you're, you're looking at the, the event stream and you've got a nice conditioned event stream coming in, then you want to start to dig deeper and you want to start to actually analyze the transactions and see what's happening overall. So you want to collect your data over a period of time now and see uh, how many of a certain type of transaction did I execute per machine in the last hour? How many withdrawals? How many deposits? How many mobile top-ups? And here, um, you're probably interested in a bunch of different dimensions. You may be interested in how long they take. You may be interested in the dollar value, the kinds of cards that are being used. So transaction analytics really gets into how do I take all this big data that's going through my environment and begin to segment it so that I can actually understand what customers are doing um, how my various services are performing and where I need to improve um, from a business perspective. And here we'll go through a list of examples because it, it, this is actually kind of where this comes to life when you start to think about this in your environment. So the, the top three are really, kind of, again, sort of the most common ones. You want to understand um, and count up the number of approved, declined, failed transactions happening. Uh, that's something that's really useful to have at an ATM level. It's great to have at a card level. Uh, you may also want it at a switch level. Um, you want to be able to count up things like reversals and incomplete transactions as well because those are an indicator that, that you know, you, those are not common things you would expect to see in the environment an awful lot. You know, reversals often happen because two components got out of sync and they weren't able to properly exchange a transaction. So you want to watch for those kinds of things. And same thing with incompletes. They may indicate a configuration problem that you want to, want to understand. Uh, the second whole area of inquiry is around transaction types and trying to really understand what, what services are your consumers using at the ATM. Because once you start to understand these transaction types, then you can really understand what is the value that this ATM is providing to my customer base. You know, is this primarily one where uh, people are doing with withdrawals or deposits? Or are they actually doing more advanced banking on this? And I want to continue to encourage them to do um, inquiries and bill payments and other types of service offerings. And so this becomes really important when you start to expand your service portfolio outside the core financial transactions and you start to think about offering value-added services on the ATM. Um, that's where these, these analytics really become especially powerful. And then the third one is that cash is a huge cost at the ATM. Um, and so being able to manage your cash more effectively by understanding where you, what your intraday position is, not having to wait to close the day to understand how much cash has left the ATM, but to be able to see in real time the rate that that cash is leaving the ATM and what your totals are at an intraday point, seeing when the ATM is replenished and trying to understand is that happening at the right point in the day 
And more importantly, are you replenishing the ATM at the same time that you're perhaps going out to actually service the ATM so that there's only one truck rolling as opposed to two, and there's only one outage window instead of two outage windows? So those are kind of the first, the first core ones. And then, then you can start to get into some interesting cases um, that take you deeper into what's happening in the channel. So looking at important events like card captures or pin errors and seeing if you know, there's any kind of unusual pattern for how these are happening. You know, if you've got a lot of card captures happening in a particular machine um, or for particular card types, you might want to investigate what's going on there and, and why, why that's happening. I mean, I, there's a lot of cases where our customers are really interested in card numbers and owners beginning to look at um, what are the patterns of competitive usage of our ATMs. You know, do we have an ATM in a location where we're actually attracting a lot of off-us transactions? Um, and, and is that interesting? And, and how do we fold that in as part of our business strategy? And do we want to do that in more places? Uh, being able to track products as well. So usage of new prepaid products. Are people actually topping them up and replenishing them at your ATMs? Um, that becomes pretty interesting to see. And then you can start to get into kind of more technical uses of the analytics as well. The first ones are really more about how the, the ATM channel is performing from a business perspective. But you can also look at the reliability of the system in terms of the different kinds of connections, uh, the latency of the various applications, um, what your typical response time looks like at an ATM, what your typical network delay is like. And then you can actually get down to the device level um, because a lot of the device traffic moves across the network as well and look at what cassettes are being used, what kind of bills are being dispensed, what currencies are moving, are there any errors, um, et cetera. So doing, beginning to do transaction analytics on the ATM means you can begin to count all these things um, and, and bring them together and get a view into what's happening. And one of the things I think is a good, good kind of break point here is to talk about the different ways you can acquire transaction data. Um, because the, the truth is we see, we see people doing this a lot of different ways. Um, you can obviously get logs off of your switch if you're, doing, if you're driving your own ATMs. Um, if you're not, if you're outsourced, this isn't an option. And this, works, this can work, but there, there's an overhead that you incur to do it. So you're paying for processor cycles, typically on pretty expensive hardware to get this data. Uh, sometimes it's not complete. Um, most transaction switches don't log incomplete transactions. They often don't see the transactions that are traveling along for value-added services. Uh, a lot of your um, check image deposits, you only get half the transaction at your switch. So this approach used to work really well when everything went through the ATM switch and, and we were dealing with simple transactions. Um, but the switch is becoming a um, a more and more cloudy point of visibility or a less complete point of visibility for, for ATM transactions these days. The other thing is this, you know, ultimately all these transactions do end up in your core banking database, um, but sometimes that takes a while, and sometimes it takes a while to get the data out, so there's a timeliness issue here. And it's often sparse. Any of the data about the timing of the transaction or sequence or flow is often lost because you're just really generating a, an accounting record in the core banking database. And it, often lacks a lot of the detail that you need uh, as an ATM channel manager. Often you can get feeds from third parties, um, perhaps from whoever's providing your switching, um, whoever's doing some of your settlement. And those third party feeds can give you lots of breakdowns on fee income and things like that. Again, you may have to wait for them. They might be daily, they might be monthly. You probably pay for them um, and you get the format you get. So if you want additional data points, uh, you're either paying for custom development to get those or and waiting in a queue, or, or you may never get them. Um, other option, take it off your own network. Um, if this data is flowing across your environment, your branch network, your distributed network, um, great place to grab it. And the only issue here is there's probably a lot of it, it's probably diverse, and you need to figure out how to manage that sort of big data piece of it yourself. Um, and then the final option is to pull it off the ATM using either agents or journals. Um, you've got to think a little bit about deployment here and whether you've got the bandwidth to pull the data back, but this is also a viable option, especially if um, you don't control your switching environment um, and you don't necessarily have a concentrated network connection among, across which all your, your transactions flow. 
Uh, by the way, our, our product in Echo Insight, we use the, the latter two approaches here. Um, we typically will pull the data off your network. Um, if that's not a viable approach, then we will use the ATM agents to get out the data. So now once you've got all this, uh, you want to be able to make sense of it. And, and what we find with many customers is that the first thing they want to do is get those alerts, those events, into their existing incident management and analytics platforms. So this is typically where the ops team says, okay, you know what, there's a, it looks like there's a much greater diversity of events I can understand about the ATM channel. I want to put those into my management system. Um, and for many of you, that's after Vision or Gasper, Gasper Vantage. So you can begin to stream that information in. You can also take the analytics information into these and begin to now put a rich record of incidents and devices and, and faults and then line that up with transactions. And you can begin to, to actually look at cross correlations and relationships between them. Um, so that gets pretty interesting as well. Um, you can also just take this data off into Excel if you're trying to do your own analysis and, and, and you've got your own questions you're asking. Um, that can be a really viable way to forward that data in as well. So. Um, Part of this is you've got to have an infrastructure in place to capture the data, to make sense of it, um, to package it and normalize it and make it usable. And then you've got to have a platform or a, a product in which you can actually make it actionable, make sense of it, and do, do advanced analytics on it. Um, and so there's some nice pairings you can do between our Insight product and products like NCR's uh, Vision and Gasper. Okay, for the last segment of this, we're going to talk a little bit about key performance indicators. Um, and when we look at what most banks are trying to do in the ATM channel, there's kind of three questions they're trying to answer. <clears throat> the first one is, how can I better serve my ATM customers? How can I understand the customer's experience? You know, kind of simulate standing over the, the shoulder of every customer for every transaction. So transaction analytics can help you understand your customer usage by time and function. What are people actually doing at your ATMs? Uh, what are the busy times? What are they doing during those busy times? Um, and what's their satisfaction level um, at those times? You can start to line up the incidents that are reported by end customers with what you actually see in the environment. So they may report that, hey, it's, the ATMs seem really slow during 10 and 11 in the morning. Well, your analytics are going to tell you whether they are actually slow at 10 or 11 in the morning whether that was an anomalous transaction uh, or whether that was a, a normal behavior. And you can start to address that. Uh, and then finally, you can really begin to segment your customers in a much more granular fashion and understand them by the different card types they're using, the different products they're consuming, the different ATMs that are out there. So you can see what level of service am I providing at my cash dispensers versus my full service ATMs. When I introduce remote deposit capture at a certain set of ATMs, how does that change the customer's experience? Is the transaction taking longer? Um, is the average interaction taking longer? How many people are using that new function? So you can really get a lot of information on how you're serving your ATM customers. And more importantly, you can start to surface that to your whole team as well as your management team and, and make a case for improvements in the channel. The second question that, that sort of drives a lot of key performance indicators in the ATM channel is, how do you reduce the cost of supporting an ATM? It's an expensive piece of equipment. It has a lot of service contracts associated with it. Um, outages and incidents can cost you uh, a lot of money. Sending a truck to the ATM twice in a day versus once in a day has a material impact. If you start to do that a handful of times a month across a dozen ATMs, the costs add up pretty quickly. So, one of the things that transaction analytics lets you do is understand your, your uptime and your availability at an ATM level, at a switch level, at a third-party connection level, and for different card types. So you can really figure out where are the opportunities to improve my availability and my uptime. How do I, how do I get beyond just looking at some of the faults of the machine and understanding where I can improve the entire ecosystem and infrastructure behind the ATM as well? And that helps bring down your support costs and helps improve your availability as well. The second thing that um, we can look at is, is, is trying to understand the business cost associated with downtime. 
So downtime can sometimes be this abstract concept where, you know, we were down five minutes this past month. Well, how much did that five minutes cost us? How many transactions were attempted during that period of time, and what was the actual dollar value? You know, did we lose $300 in revenue, or did we lose $3,000 in revenue? Um, and that begins, that really helps you understand how to prioritize issues and, and move through them at the right rate. And then the final piece is transaction analytics, by giving you this view into what's happening, can help you um, do faster, deeper root cause analysis uh, and get to the bottom of issues much quicker. And then the third set of KPIs that we see within most retail banks is, is all around the profitability or the return on investment. Uh, within the ATM channel. And so here, again, it becomes really important to look at your business cost associated with downtime, your lost business. So you can really make a case to say, look, if we drive a tighter SLA with this third-party service provider, we can improve our availability by 0.2%, by and that's going to translate into X amount more revenue, or X amount less lost revenue, perhaps, is another way to look at it. That's going to improve the profitability of the channel. When you're looking at failed customer transactions, you can again look at it from a lost revenue perspective and understand and, and make the case that, okay, yeah, we had 12 failed transactions, but that means we actually lost um, $1,000 per ATM of this type for this kind of transaction. And then finally, a big part of, of managing a modern ATM fleet is really understanding the role that every single ATM plays in your business strategy. Every ATM is going to have a different transaction mix, and that's, that's okay. But you need to make sure that that mix, you need to understand that mix and make sure that it's doing what your customers want it to do. You know, how many withdrawals and deposits and account-to-account -account transfers are happening? Because um, some ATMs are, are going to look like they're not generating a lot of revenue for you, but it turns out they're facilitating a lot of different consumer transactions, um, and they're providing a lot of value to your, to your customers or to your members. So again, transaction analytics helps you get deeper, generate better key performance indicators, and understand more about what your customers are actually doing. There are three key groups within a typical bank that, that can use ATM analytics. Um, and transaction analytics. The first one is the, the operations team. And they can use it to understand the health of devices, understand the health of the whole end-to-end -end system, to plan capacity, to manage rollouts of new services, lots of different ways that, that uh, transaction analytics can, can deliver value to an ATM operations team. Now, often a lot of the distributed infrastructure behind the ATM is actually owned by an operations or an application team. Who's really their role is really to support that infrastructure and ensure it's it's reliable and delivers high service quality. ATM analytics helps them spot network and application problems. Helps you also work more closely with the ops team to resolve them, understand the impact of those issues and, and what kind of priority should be placed on fixing them. And then finally, um, if you're responsible for the ATM channel, you're on the retail banking side, you're on the marketing group. Being able to understand the, the profitability of an ATM is a great benefit on analytics. Being able to track campaigns, the impact potentially of um, new software features that you're rolling out, uh, new service offerings, new targeted messaging, you name it. You know, perhaps you roll out a, a new uh, low-interest loan product at the ATM and, and you're only doing it at certain machines or for people with certain cards and you want to see the pickup on that particular campaign. And then finally, one of the big ones we see as well is being able to understand how competitors are using, uh, sorry, how the customers of competitors are using your ATM. So just to wind this up, uh, I want to talk through a case study. And this is a customer that um, we've been working with in the United Arab Emirates. Um, and the problem that they came to us with was they're very keenly focused on, on ATM profitability and really understanding what's happening at their ATMs and trying to drive more transactions and, and more business through the ATM channel. The report, the, the first thing that started this whole investigation was the reports that they needed to prepare uh, to understand the channel were getting more and more difficult. They were having to bring the data from more and more diverse sources. 
they had to do a lot of crunching. It took a lot of time to put these reports together. And, and often, uh, as a result, the data wasn't as fresh as they'd like it to be. The second thing was they really wanted to understand not just how the devices were behaving, but how their customers were behaving on their devices. So they really didn't have customer analytics available to the operations or to the marketing teams. And they desperately wanted this information. Um, so, and then the final piece was that they, they had a real fragmented view into the ATM environment. So they knew they had a big data problem, in other words, and that their data was, was all over the place. So we worked with them in a couple of fronts. We worked with them, first of all, to produce a, a set of um, almost three dozen customized analytics uh, that gave them a much deeper view into how the ATM channel was, uh, was behaving and what their profitability actually looked like. And that data actually goes into their ATM management system on an hourly basis. And it's partly consumed by the operations team to understand what's happening, and it's also consumed by the, uh, the marketing and the channel management teams to really see what's happening in the channel. The second real driver and, and, and key part of the solution was being able to isolate service issues at the ATM much faster and reduce and understand their failed consumer interactions much better so they could address them and they could, again, improve their availability and their uptime, both at a device level as well as at a transaction level. Uh, this particular customer has about, I think it's uh, almost two dozen different types of transactions that they support at the ATM. A lot of different value-added services as well, a lot of different card products. And so they're doing a lot of business at the ATM, and they really needed to be able to get beyond the notion of just deposits and withdrawals. And finally, uh, one of the other key drivers for them was they wanted to begin to, to get real-time or near real-time feedback on how their different campaigns were performing at the ATM. They, they look at their ATMs as a, a great way to acquire um, customer deposits. So they were actually looking very carefully at when the customers of a competitor use our, our ATM, we want to offer them some discounts we want to put some targeted messaging in front of them to offer them some products and services we think they'd be interested in. And we want to see if this is working. And we want to see if it's working quickly so that we can actually adjust it um, and fine tune our approach. And they're using our product to give them that timely access to that kind of information so that they can adjust and, and focus their, their campaign and their strategy overall. Finally, just uh, I'll give you an example of a couple of the, the analytics that, uh, that we're doing with this particular customer. Uh, so they're looking at cash deposits and withdrawals, but they support multiple currencies in the ATM, and they actually want to be able to see this by currency type, and this affects their replenishment strategy um, pretty, pretty deeply. Secondly, they want to understand um, where, where withdrawals are coming from. In other words, are people taking money out on their debit, their prepaid, um, their credit card products? They want to understand, you know, how, where's the cash coming from? Where's that cash flowing from? They also, as I mentioned, want to really understand when cash is taken out by, um, cut, by competitors' customers. They want to understand who they are and where they're coming from and what machines they're using. Uh, it's a big part of their strategy. They do a lot of prepaid uh, card reloads and other value-added services. They want to be able to understand uh, what all of those are and how they're being used. And then finally, they're, they're also very interested in the, the kind of, um, think about it almost as, as, as branch teller um, deferment transactions. They're really interested in account-to-account -account transfers and pin changes and things like that and, and, and seeing how many of those are migrating out of the branch and onto the ATM. Um, they obviously don't make any money off of these transactions, but they avoid a pretty high servicing cost on them. And so they're interested in that as well. And continuing as part of this, they're, they're educating their customers that they can do these kinds of things on the ATM, and they want to see if, if that has an impact. OK, and with that, we're going to open things up for Q&A. And I've, I've seen a few questions come across the chat as we've been going here, so we'll start diving into those. If you have additional questions, please uh, feel free to submit them, and we will uh, answer them as we go here. Um, if you're shy, if you have a complex question that you can't, just don't want to get down in, a, in the short form, 
please feel free to email Stacy. Um, her, her address is on the slide here, and we'll make sure we get it answered for you. Okay, so let's go. Uh, first is, uh, we talked a little bit about where this data comes from, off the network or agents, et cetera. Uh, what happens if it's encrypted? Uh, it's a good question. We're certainly seeing encryption between the ATM and the switch becoming a more common thing. Uh, a couple of ways to handle this. Um, one is we pick it up in the clear. So once it's decrypted at the switch, we pick the transaction traffic up there. Um, second thing is we can deploy an agent on the ATM to pick up the transaction before that encryption process occurs. And third is we actually sit in the middle. Um, we're part of your key management system, and we can actually decrypt the transaction for analysis. So three different approaches there, and it just depends on what your security architecture is. Can we track data at uh, the device to the switch level? Um, it's actually, we can track it at, at both levels, um, and actually deeper than that. We can track certainly what a device is doing. We can track how it's interacting with a switch. We can also look at how a switch is interacting with an authorization host, and we can look at how a device is interacting with a, another piece of software that, that isn't your switch, perhaps your RDC platform or your mobile top-up platform. So kind of regardless of where that transaction goes when it leaves the ATM, um, we can pick it up and analyze it and present it to you. Um, are we working off of raw TCP data, raw network data? Yes, we are basically capturing all the messages that are going back and forth across the network. And that's what allows us to do things like timing information, for instance, and time how long a transaction takes, how long it takes to move across the network versus how long it spends in the device or in the application. Can we track cash outs and low cash positions? Yeah, one of the things we can do here, and this is a great example of where um, taking the data out of Insight and putting it into your, um, your ATM management system can, can really play nicely, where Insight can track, obviously, the flow of cash from a machine. We can track replenishment events. If the machine reports it's running low on cash, we could track that event. But you can also take all this data and flow it into your management system which might have a, an accurate view of the, the opening cash balance, for instance, of the ATM. You can decrement it every time you get the data in from Insight, and you can see your actual cash position in, in real time intraday. Can we track on us versus off us stats? Yes. So you can set up and tell us what your bin ranges are that you own. Um, you can begin to actually categorize the other ones if you'd like as well, so we can present you with a very detailed view of what kinds of cards are being used at your, uh, your machine. So I talked a little bit about incomplete transactions, and there's a couple of questions around this one. Um, so the, the key with an incomplete transaction is they're often handled in an unusual way. First of all, when, a, when you get an incomplete transaction or one where perhaps the message wasn't formatted quite right, a lot of transaction switches will just kind of ignore or drop that transaction, and it'll never hit a log. So you may never know that it's occurring. And that's a problem for two reasons. One, it's, it's a problem because you could have a perfectly legitimate device on your network that's misconfigured that you don't know about. Um, second thing is, you could have an unauthorized device on your network that's trying to execute a transaction, and maybe sooner or later they'll be successful, and that's kind of scary. Um, and the third issue is, if you're dealing with a third-party service provider, um, and your, your transaction isn't quite formatted right, they may process it, but they may actually charge you more for it. Um, so that starts to impact the profitability of the channel as well. So uh, when we have an incomplete transaction in Insight, we give you a full do, um, breakdown on that transaction and what it looks like and what happened and any kind of details we can glean about it um, so that you can investigate why. Um, We've talked a lot about the ATM channel. There was a question in here, can we do this for point of sale and, and other channels, mobile, et cetera? And the answer is yes. Um, we have customers that are using Insight to monitor point of sale, to monitor mobile, to monitor online. Uh, we even have customers that are monitoring IVR and, and branch transactions using Inetco Insight as well. So we happen to be quite good at the ATM channel, but we can also do others. Um, and we have pretty strong expertise in others as well. What other management platforms do you forward this data to? So we have specific integrations built for um, NCR's After Vision and Gasper Vantage products, for Tivoli, um, the, the NetCool product, 
for the HP, what used to be called OpenView, um, and for Splunk. We also have a, a variety of kind of lowest common denominator ways of putting this data out, um, including uh, CSV format for putting it into Excel. Okay, and the final question is, uh, is a question around EMV. And this is an interesting one because often we hear when, um, when either retailers or banks adopt EMV, there's a, there's a change in the transaction flow, obviously. The transaction feels slower to the end customer, and you often are trying to understand from a technical perspective, is this transaction um, you know, slower for legitimate reasons, because we're doing a pin check locally, um, or is there something that's changed about the way the transaction moves that's a problem for us? And so um, Insight lets you get a view into your, your chip and pin versus your contact list versus your standard swipe transactions, and actually benchmark how you're doing across those as well. Okay, that looks like it's the end of the questions from the chat. So at this point, I think we'll wind things up. Um, just a couple of notes before we finish. If you have other questions, feel free to email Stacy. Um, if you'd like to get a demo of Insight, learn more about it, um, contact us at insight.inetco.com. And if you're just kind of interested and want to continue to follow us, um, you can follow us at Inetco Insight on Twitter. Uh, we're also pretty frequent posters to LinkedIn. Um, there's a variety of, of demo videos available on YouTube, uh, and we'll, we post updates on Facebook as well. And as I mentioned, we will provide a copy of this, um, this presentation and a recording of it for you to use at your leisure. Thank you very much for your time today, and enjoy the rest of your day.